Morning everyone. Um, got the day off today because it is my birthday. So I thought I didn't have much on at work. So I thought I'll take the day. Um, my missus is working from home as well, so she's home. Uh, we just ended up going out for brekkie down at the beach there. Nice place actually. Um, nice big breakfast. So yeah, it was good. And then uh, take it easy for the rest of the day. The missus got to work, but um, I thought while I'm home, I might make a um, show you the problem I got. So got the new clippers for the dogs the other day. Um, and this is the problem. Loves roll. So I don't want these falling off because I have dropped a set of clippers before. Either cracking cracking that plastic guide or even worse, if it if it bends this blade here, it's just gone. So uh, you'd have to get a new blade and and it's probably gonna crack the um, casing as well. So I don't want that to happen. So um, I've already already just measured it up and I've got it running on the 3D printer right now. So if you can imagine like a little, it's gonna have like a, I'm, what I'm gonna do now is make up a wooden base of decent size so that it can't fall over. Um, then I'm 3D printing a, kind of looks like a toilet roll holder just for that to slip into on a bit of an angle. Um, so there's no point, the 3D printers are good, but there's no point printing a big flat piece of rectangle um, if you can make it out of wood. And I'm just looking, that's that's probably what I want, that MDF right there. Uh, if I've got a thicker bit, I may use it, but I don't think I'm going to. Actually, the only place I might have it, there's a bit of scrap, is down here. Dex is um, sunbathing. I think Alfie's inside. So I could even use... This, this is pretty shot, this wood, though. I want to route the edge as well. Nah. nah. This is all for the bin. We get, like, um, put all your stuff out on the verge and they come once a year and take all the big stuff that doesn't fit in the bin. So that's kind of that pile I've put there. Um, yeah, no, I'll just use that bit of MDF. That'll be fine. As long as it just spreads out a bit, just so it can't tip over. But that's all we want. Um, the, the the other next best thing I was going to do was make something so that you, you put it in like that and it can't roll. That was another option, but I think this, this way is better. I mean, it, it's not going to tip over. The whole thing would have to, you'd have to really hit it to, to tip it over. So, see how that goes. But, um, yeah. So, yeah, I've got a router. Uh, where is it? I haven't even used it. This one. Oh. I think I've used it once just to try it out. There are the bits for it. So yeah, I'll um all I'm gonna do is cut a square, probably. Um I think the base is so what I've done is I've created like its own base, 70 mil diameter, and then the actual cone that comes up to hold the thing is 50 mil. So uh it's got a 10 mil buffer around so it's got a, a 70 mil circle that's only about five mil high. And then it's got the 50 mil toilet roll holder coming up to slip the thing in, and then it's going to have the base. So what I was saying was, is, is if you can make it out of wood, I mean a flat rectangle shape. There's no point 3D printing that because that would take a lot of plastic, number one, and it's um, it'll probably add like three hours to the print, and I can make that in five minutes. Um, so yeah, there's no there's no point uh, doing simple shapes like that. And then what I'll do is I'll just get, find a suitable glue. Um, probably the best glue for plastic to wood, I'd probably just use a, a 30 minute slow cure epoxy or, or the five minute, it doesn't matter. Either one of them, um, that's not gonna come apart. So I think we'll do that. And what I normally do is I mix up the the epoxy and then um, probably use this this super glue is pretty old I want to try and use that um, uh, it's probably a good 10 years old this one but it still works um, so I'll put a, a couple dabs of super glue and then the epoxy and then put it down 
and then the super glue will like instantly hold it and then while the epoxy is going off so that way you don't have to clamp it or anything the super glue does it um, probably being that it's gonna be oh no I'll still use a router that's a that's a six mil or so I think it says on the edge yeah Ah, oh, nine mil. Yeah, that's nine mil thick. So yeah, we'll definitely get a nice edge on it with the router. That'll be nice. And then I was thinking I should have some somewhere. I did save it here. I've got a bit of rubber. Um, I've got a bit of rubber to put under so it doesn't slip around. Or I've even got where did I see it? This stuff. Nice thick foam. Yeah, I might use that. So what I might do is, that's wider, oh that's a fair bit there, so yeah, I'll get this one, and I'll probably just make the base exactly that width, that'll be, that'll turn out alright, and that's, um, yeah, that's nice and groupy, that's not, that won't go anywhere, probably make it, I don't know, 100 by 100, something like that, depends what this is, that'll determine that, and then I'll just square it up, cut it up. Um, and what I'm also going to do is get some nice edging on it, so I will use probably no more gaps and I'll go around and make it so it's a nice transition from where all the glue joints are once the glue's dry um, just to make it nicely rounded. Uh, you could use bog, I've got bog as well, but uh, bog will probably crack whereas that's a bit more flexible. So yeah, we'll get started on that. Okay, so I've got that cut, 135mm by 135mm, piece of wood, 135mm, 135mm, just rounded the top corners off with the router, bit of sandpaper, uh, centers marked, and I, th I think the thing I'm printing is 75mm, but if not, it's you can center it using that. Um, I'll glue that, uh, do the edges nicely with some um, caulking, uh, just to make them all nice and rounded, so there's just no hard hard transitions. Um, and then I think I'll paint it, so I've got a primer filler, I'm pretty sure this stuff goes alright on MDF, MDF is very hard to paint, if you just go straight over with paint, you definitely need a primer, and even then it can be tricky, I'd say this is going to cover nice, but where I've routed and opened it up, it's going to be a bit tricky, so rather than one thick coat of paint, you just put multiple thin coats of filler, and then this hammer finish paint is quite thick, so same thing, uh, two or three thin coats rather than one thick coat is a lot better because um, what it does is it sits on right if you put it on too thick it just sinks straight into the MDF if you put it on nice and thin it just sits on top um, and then dries give it 10 minutes and then give it another coat and then that fills it in and you are kind of just filling in the top layer of that MDF whereas if you just pour it on it just sinks straight in and you're back to square one it's all it's almost like back to that color so yeah, they're the two things I'm going to use. Um, that'll be fine. The only thing now, I've got to wait probably another six hours of print time, five, six hours to, to finish off that um, the print that's on there for the actual cone thing. I was just thinking, I probably, I've probably got pipe here. I mean, will that fit? Yeah, so <laughs> I could have just used that. Could have used a bit of pipe and cut that put it there but whatever I'll get to use a 3d printer this way if it doesn't work with the 3d printer then I'll probably use that and um, yeah but yeah e either either it doesn't matter I can cut that like on a bit of an angle and then that way this would sit back here I don't know how you would connect that pipe to this though that's all because um, you don't that's that's why I'm 3d printing the base so that the base of the 3d print has something to bond to here and then put it in there so but yeah if that doesn't work out and if I can't fix it because if it is a bit tight you can see this kind of tapers you can see that these I actually measured that so that's how my, how wide I've made it but yeah if it kind of binds up or it's too tight I can just put a Dremel in the in the bit that I'm printing and just to widen it up so we'll see how we go anyway but yeah if that 3d print doesn't work I'm not going to adjust it and then print it again I'll probably work out a way to do that uh, what I probably could do is get my hole saw and, and drill through halfway through this with the hole saw on an angle and then slip slip it in. Um, or I could even get another bit of MDF and uh, another square and glue it to that and then go through with the hole saw so that's 18mm thick then. And then, um, yeah, go through the hole saw and, and, and slip it in and glue it as well. But, uh, yeah, it's getting, it's getting warm. I think it's going to be like 35 today, so... 
um, oh yeah it's nicer out here much nicer so um, yeah I'll probably uh, I got that ready to go for the paint so I get paint all over this and I've learnt too to change my glasses I just got some new glasses and I'll keep my old work ones here and my old prescription when you're painting because otherwise you get paint back on your glasses and it's really hard to get off and you shouldn't really be using um, any harsh chemicals to clean your glasses anyway and uh, yeah and and I just got these glasses in November and I've already scratched them on the left lens right in the middle so I uh, should be going this week hopefully to pick up a new one new lens they're going to put in for me which is uh, good it's covered under insurance so that was lucky so yeah but anyway I'll get back to that um, other good news as well so the Toronto started up on the weekend uh, it's been out of action for six months we finally figured out what it was so that's all up and running and then I took it yesterday big drive didn't miss a beat it was beautiful uh, down to this place that they consignment sell your car and uh, talked to a guy there and he was pretty pretty good he had a heap of other cars that were worth way more than my car there so um, he said yeah no dramas I've got a few things to tidy up and, and button up on my car before I give it to anyone but um, yeah it looks like that's probably the way we're gonna go is uh, give it to someone else to sell um, I just don't want to deal with tire kickers and people wanting to test drive it and things like that this guy's fully insured uh, he demands um, proof of funds and a deposit before you even go for a test drive and he won't even let you drive it he drives it with you in the car so heaps better doesn't take any any crap from anyone so um, it's what he does so leave it to the professionals and it's about 300 bucks for me to to use him but he puts it on five different websites and uh, Australia wide not just Perth whereas um, I, I might look into it to advertise on car sales that's one of the big ones which is Australia wide um, I, I'm pretty sure they're going to be about a hundred dollars or so to, to put an ad on so for an extra two hundred dollars you get exposure to four more websites Australia wide so and I don't have to worry about uh, test driving I don't have to worry about taking deposits I don't have to worry about the money it's pretty much I give him the car and sell it give it to him to sell on consignment I tell him what my bottom figure is and he'll do whatever he can to get above that but he won't go below it um, and then yeah the money all of a sudden one day the money's in my account the cars on its way over east or sold locally whatever and um, it's all done so yeah nice and easy so yeah all good but anyway I'll wait for this 3d print to finish and then we'll start assembling but yeah as if this 3d print works I have all the parts ready to go so glue that or first of all glue the 3d print to this cork it up around the edges paint it prime it paint it which will probably be today and that's about it let it dry overnight and then glue that to the bottom and we're done I'm not going to paint that obviously so yeah that'll be the last thing that goes on but anyway thanks for watching and um, two seconds we'll be back when the 3d prints done okay I was just reading um, about sealing this MDF because I've had dramas in the past um, trying to paint it and it just never looks right um, so I thought I'd do a bit of reading and 50-50 uh, PVA PVA glue wood glue and water they reckon is the go so I'll just put a splash that'll be enough yep mix it up I give that a paint job and uh, um, is that 50 50 yeah yeah um, let's see what this looks like I'll just use that just get, give it a dust let's see what this comes out like um, that's more water than anything I will um, add a bit more glue Some people were saying, no, nah, don't thin it, just put straight glue on. But some people were saying to thin it. So that's that's going to be a bit thicker now. Ah, oh, that's better. A bit more of a paste. Okay, yep. That's better. I'll just um, I'll wipe... Uh, how can I I'll use this? Mainly the edges. I'll just wipe that first little layer off, um, and just paint, paint that on, and hopefully that um, that'll seal her up. I'm almost. This is still a bit too thin. I'm almost tempted just to put it on straight. 
I'll just hope that that water doesn't damage it. Make it bubble up. Uh, 3D print's got about three hours to go, so this will definitely be dry. It's quite warm outside, so um, yeah, it's uh, it'll dry. Let's do this. A bit unorthodox, but that's what we're all about. So there's a little bit of water still in the brush. And the wood's still wet, so it's kind of not straight, but a straight mix, but that's okay. I've been thinking about it too. What I might do is actually, if I have a hole saw uh, that's the same size as the 3D print, if I thought about it before, I, I would have made the base uh, like this, exactly the same size as a hole saw that I already have. Um, then I could have just hold saw through this and then the bit could have actually sit in there to get a bit like just to make it a bit stronger but it doesn't matter we'll work something out it's not not going to be hanging off it it's just to hold clippers so it's nothing too serious all right I think I think that'll do um, I might even just leave it in the shed because it's quite warm in here there's no point leaving it in the sun this is going to take two seconds to dry so we'll just leave it at that um, yeah, and then I'll, I'll come back when, um, the, by the time the 3D print's done, that's definitely going to be dry, and, uh, we should be, should be in good shape then to, to paint that. Okay, yeah, that took a, that took a quite a while to print, but, um, come on, really good, really good. I've just had to Dremel the inside, um, due to the fact, I think, what it is, you can see how there's edges, um, that's, that is a circle, oh, I've actually made it a little bit oval because this thing's not a perfect circle either, but fits in nice and locks in as well, if you can see there, it doesn't, doesn't even want to turn and it won't fit any other way apart from that way, and it is leaning back quite nicely, that's how I wanted it, leaning back, um, it's not going to stay up in that, but once it's on this, it will, it'll, it'll stay up nicely there, and um, that'll offer this base plate is it's definitely not going to go anywhere so yeah it's quite a nice fit but as usual I made it a bit too tight and um, yeah so you can see these lines so I wanted a circle but I don't think it's the printer because a printer can print circles I think it's the software that you design it in is quite a basic software um, so it looks at a circle as segments of lines but yeah it came up good the, the base is really nice I might actually have to rough this up because it is very smooth. Um, so I'll rough that up with the Dremel, just put some cut lines in it, and then when that glues, at least it's got something to bite into. Because um, I think in it, if, even if you glue it, it's so smooth, it's just going it, to, if you do knock it, it's going to come off. But yeah, everything else in here has come up nice. Um, so I, I was going to put some more, I've got heaps of this stuff, I was actually going to put some in, some little bits in here and glue it to, to make it padded, but it's such a tight fit it it can't move so yeah there's n it's not going to be any benefit at all so cool so um so the in that internal line internal circle that is that and i just have to make sure that i do orientate it with uh this line here because that's the front if it makes sense uh even though it's a circle that's the way it fits so that that is the front so that way everything's all all square so I'll just go ahead now and epoxy epoxy that what I'll do is I'll just mix, mix the epoxy here and then just spread it around and then plonk that on rather than do it somewhere else but I, I just want to cut a bit of a few keys into that and a few slashes into that and that and that way it all sticks nicely right oh so yeah um, I just got the Dremel zigzags a few cuts in it same as the bottom um, then I'll just put that there so I'm getting um, dirty everywhere uh, now I'll put this in and I just want to square square this up so put it in give it a turn uh, doesn't matter if it kind of a little bit leaks out because um, I'm gonna go around it um, with the cork anyway there we go and that's it I was going to put super glue, but not necessary with this thing in there. It's um, it's pretty tight. It's not going to go anywhere. So that actually looks quite good. There's a nice little bead all the way around it. I don't know if I can get in any 
any closer, but yeah, looks good. So I think we'll um, we'll leave that. I, I used the five minute epoxy, so um, yeah, shouldn't take long. Well, it's already gone off. There we go. That's hard to move. And I didn't even check, but yeah, it's all so the clippers are parallel to this edge here. Boom, perfect. So can probably. Uh, just moved. No, I'll leave them in there. That's okay. Yeah, it's just starting to grip now. Um, I think because it's hot, uh, it's not taking too long. But it's all centered, all square. So I'll leave it like that for 10 minutes, 15 minutes, maybe even. I, I, I want to get it painted. It's about 5 o'clock, I think, at the moment. So I definitely want to get it painted, uh, at least primed tonight. I don't think this takes too long. Uh, three to five minutes. Uh, uh, no, 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 no. One minute drying time between coats. Uh, fill of touch dry and can be recoated after an hour. So yeah, I might get it painted tonight. We'll see. I know this stuff takes a while. It's quite, quite a thick paint, but it is really nice. Uh, five minutes. Apply further to heavier application will result in a more pronounced pattern yeah and that's that's what I want to get that pattern um, but it doesn't say no it doesn't say how long it actually takes it just says between coats but it doesn't say quick drying okay might not be able to do that tonight but we'll see um, but anyway I'll get back to you when this is dry and we'll start doing some priming Okay, so it's all glued, and it's one coat of primer. Now I'll bring it in the sun, should be right. So you can see it is sucking it in on the edges there. But um, as long as we get a little bit of primer on there, should be fine. That um, hammer finish paint is quite thick, and that, that is, it's going to fill. So it shouldn't be a worry. And that's after one coat of paint, nice and thick. It, this heart, this stuff is um, this hammer finish paint. It's quite difficult to put on thin. It's it just speckly otherwise. So to get a bit of coverage, you need to put it on quite thick. But the the kind of paint that it is, it is it's okay to do that. You can see, you can still see through. You can still see see through to the 3D print. Um, so yeah, it's definitely not too thick. But uh, that should be fine. So I think I'll I'll have a quick read. I think this was five minutes. I think between coats so i leave it in the sun heat it up thin it out give it a good shake again but yeah i'm pretty sure in five minutes it'll be ready for another coat we'll go i'll show you after that one okay that's after the second coat and i really piled that on uh quite thick i don't know if you can see it but you almost need this paint to run to, to get that effect that hammer finish effect uh so it is a bit more forgiving but yeah looks all right um, it might lose a bit of that gloss as it dries, but we'll see how we go. So that's two coats. I'm going to do one more coat after this. So five minutes it is between coats. Don't even think about it, mate. Hopefully that fly doesn't go on it. But yeah, that looks nice. Got a night really thick, that third coat. Um, yeah, you can see it f like just flowing, and you can actually see the transition between the base and the 3D print where the glue kind of was sticking out looks really nice and even the transition from what uh, the 3D printed base to the to the toilet roll holder bit is, is really nice that some of the paint has run down and filled that in so that looks really good happy with that um, being that it's that thick um, I'm gonna leave it overnight I'm not gonna try and rush that because that's that's gonna take a few hours to uh, to dry for sure so I might um, put it back inside there and uh, we'll go from there and then I'll pick this up tomorrow um, and really all that's left is a few little dabs of super glue and put that put the, the anti-slip base kind of thing on it and she's all done so um, actually I might even yeah, that's what I'll do is I'll end this video here because there's really nothing more to it um, and I'll just finish off with a few um, few little uh, photos I'll take with my phone 
uh, just to show you the finished product and, and it working. So thanks for watching. Another quick prop. Well, it wasn't quick. Um, as far as I was concerned, it was quick. It was only about 10, 15 minutes. But the actual 3D print, that took forever. That, that was about seven hours. So, but yeah, worked fine. So good use for the 3D printer. Anyway, thanks for watching and we'll see you next time. And finished product. Put in the sun so we can see it a bit. Oh, I'm all shut. I've just got back from the scooter ride and um, uh, car clean, giving my car a bit of a clean. And yeah, I'm all my hands, all, my right hands, all shaky from pressing the uh, the uh, car washing thing for like 10 minutes. But anyway, looks quite nice. Nice finish that. It's dried up really good overnight. And uh, oh, turn it on. And it only fits one way. It only fits that way, which is all square. Nice. So yeah, and it's dead. Can't tip over. No way. Yeah. All good. Alright, thanks for watching. Another successful project. And we'll see you guys next time.